There is one story which shows uh, how loving Baha'u'llah was towards children. And it's a story of uh, one of the followers remembered when he was four or five years old. Him and his family, they were uh, together uh, visiting uh, Baha'u'llah on a Friday for lunch. And after lunch, uh, when uh, all the adults went to bed to rest, this little boy went upstairs and as he was walking around, he found uh, a room with a bag of sweets. And he was so excited, he went and he picked some sweet, put in his mouth. Then uh, he also picked some more and uh, both hands were full of sweets. And as he was about to get out of the room, he looked up and he froze when he saw Baha'u'llah standing there, smiling at him. And uh, obviously he was nervous and Baha'u'llah, in a very loving way, he said to him, Oh, it seems you like sweets. Come with me. So he takes his hand and he takes, uh, Baha'u'llah takes this little boy to a room. And uh, in this room there was a big tray of all sorts of sweets. And he will pick some and gives them to this little boy. And he says, enjoy. And then he, he walks away. And this little boy says that, uh, well, the man, he says that I never forgot the loving kindness that Baha'u'llah showed to me. And those days, these childish acts, they were never appreciated by others. And it stayed with him for the rest of his life. Well, there are so many stories, and I'll tell one in a minute, but perhaps it's just useful to say that there were, because Baha'u'llah lived so recently, apart from his books and his letters and so on, we have so many stories of his life from his earliest childhood uh, through to his exile and his imprisonment. So we, uh, and what we can look at is see these stories as a source of tremendous sort of insights into the life he led and the life he would want us to lead. And what comes through with them is kindness and love and you know, he was known in his homeland as the father of the poor. And uh, the story I'd like to share is a story when Baha'u'llah was in Baghdad. So he and his family had been exiled to Baghdad. Uh, and they, they came there, people came to know them. And as the more they knew them, they respected them and admired them. And many of them fell in love with him. Uh, so Baha'u'llah became, um, he would go to the coffee houses in the, in the town and people, it would be full of people coming to ask advice, to ask the answers to very difficult questions and so on. He was very popular. And when Baha'u'llah went to the coffee house, he would walk out from his house and he would walk through a very poor area of the city. And there was almost always an old lady there. She was, she was 80 years old and she would wait for Baha'u'llah to pass because she loved him so much. And uh, he was always, you know, he would greet her and he would... Um, ask how she was, how her health was, and so on. And she would ask to kiss his hands and as a sign of respect. And he didn't want her to kiss his hands as, because it was disrespectful for her. And um, so she would ask if, he, if she could kiss his cheeks. And, so, and she was a very short lady, and she was bent over with age, you know. And so Baha'u'llah would get right down almost on his knees so that she could kiss on one side and then kiss on the other side, and then he'd go off on his way. And I just think it's a lovely story illustrating his concern for the poor. And it's interesting that after he was exiled a second time, he never went back to Baghdad, he, um, he left behind a sum of money to be given to this lady as an allowance for the rest of her days. I often remember the story told by the father of Baha'u'llah. And that narrative reminds me of the great message that is spreading through the whole world brought by Baha'u'llah. And in that dream, Baha'u'llah's father saw his own son as a child swimming in a vast, enormous, huge ocean. His black hair was floating under water. And what he noticed was that his son's face, Baha'u'llah's face, was shining, it was bright, radiant. And this light spread all over the ocean. It just illuminated the, the whole ocean. And then he noticed a multitude of fishes gathering around Baha'u'llah. And each of them swam to the tip of Baha'u'llah's hair and clung very firmly to his hair. 
but none of them was able to harm him, and they followed him everywhere Bahá'u'lláh swam. If he swam to the right, they followed him there. If he changed the direction and he went to the left, again the fish would follow him. And when his father woke up in the morning, he was very intrigued. What does this dream mean? And in those days there were people that would know the inner meaning of dreams. So Baha'u'llah's father approached one of those wise men and asked him, what's the meaning? Tell me, what does it mean? And the gentleman looked at him and he said, the sea, the enormous ocean that Baha'u'llah was swimming in, it represents the whole world. And the shining, the splendor, the radiance that you saw in the sea, that represents his message, that it would be spreading all over the world. And the fish, the fish represents the turmoil he will create, because this new message was very uncomfortable to some people. Yet, none of those fishes is able to harm him. Nothing will happen to him. The message will spread and he will stay safe. So for me, this is a very important message about the spread of the Baha'i faith. It is connected to difficulties, turmoil, lots of sacrifices. Yet it is still spreading until today, like the light that spread from the face of Baha'u'llah, it is still spreading all over the world now.